Hey everybody, Centurion1307 back at you with another video and a question. Are gaming journalists getting way too whiny in this generation? For real, I remember back when gaming was actually a really big skill set and that games were meant to be challenging because that's what people were looking for. In my opinion, games today are easier to play more than ever, but before we get into how that is, Let's talk about the people that don't think they are. There's a lot more gaming journalists complaining about this problem than I have time for, but these are the big ones that I can seem to find lately. I guess I should even be a little worried about talking about these guys, seeing they are very vocal to their critics. First up, let's talk about Dean Takahashi and his attempt and failure at playing the tutorial for Cuphead. Now, Dean is a tech journalist. He's not really that big of a reviewer. In one of his quotes, he even states that he only does about a dozen reviews a year. Interestingly enough, he has wrote two books that supposedly expose Microsoft and the Xbox brand. There is multiple ways to look at his review. From his perspective, it originally started as a joke because of his inability to play the tutorial because he could not understand basic instruction from the game's designers. And it must be mentioned that this tutorial has been beaten by four-year-olds. In trying to make himself not look like an inaccurate journalist, he started off with calling the game's designer a liar. Rather than acting like a professional and taking it with stride and admitting that he should have never reviewed this product due to his inexperience with playing games of that nature, he decided to start criticizing his own critics. He eventually released an apology of sorts while criticizing people for the way they felt about it and then he also pointed out that the actual game review was going to be done later on that year by somebody who actually preferred 2D platformers. Oh, there I said it, that word preferred. A lot of journalists today are forced to review games that they do not prefer or show any interest in, and this happens time and time again. Yes, sadly, I'm going to bring up a review for Rock Band 4 from back in 2015, but it must be pointed out that this individual put in his review that games are stupid. If that doesn't get some heads turning in the crowd, the next sentence will. In his review, he stated that he does not even like rock music or crowds, and that he felt that this game was completely uninteresting to him, and that he was being forced to review it. I'm starting to do game reviews myself, and I would never, ever, ever review a game or product that I did not show interest in, because it would just be completely pointless at that time for me to even do it. Another push for personal preference comes from Beta News, where the reviewer starts attacking the design of the new Xbox One X Shazam edition that's going to be raffled off for charity. In his title alone, you can see the negativity leaking out of his article by calling it ugly. In the first few sentences of the article, he wants to emphasize the fact that he does not like superhero movies and the thought of fighting crime with magical superpowers is silly. Just another example of, if you don't like superhero movies, why are you talking about a superhero based console? Here's the article that's got the whole world in an uproar. Forbes.com decided to release an article demanding that From Software learn to put easy modes in their product. Hey, gaming journalists, it's been no secret for a very long time that From Software makes some of the hardest games this generation. From Bloodborne to Dark Souls to now Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, everybody is complaining about the fact of a game that makes you deliberately lose progression when you die. To save us from these evil de game developers that make hard games, they use the handicap community to their advantage saying that making games too hard only hinders players ability to play them. They even try to go as far as saying that hey we're just trying to help you make more money if the games were easier more people would want to play them. 
Hardware developers are starting to recognize the needs of the disabled community and wanting to play these games. By developing products like the adaptive controller, they're trying to introduce the ease of use of playing harder to play games. This brings us into my opinion that games today are easier to play more than ever. And let me list off a few reasons why. Let's start off with an obvious one. Does anybody remember these two famous words? Game over. Games back in the day that were considered hard were made that way deliberately because the original Super Mario's game only took two hours to beat if you knew what you were doing. By increasing the difficulty level, you would have to play longer. Along with this difficulty rating, they would also only allow you a set number of lives and once you ran out, you got a game over and pretty much had to start over. And to make keeping those lives even harder, some games like Mario and Sonic introduced clocks that made it to where you had to beat a level in a set amount of time or you would die. Another example of how games are easier to play is the open world feature. In games like Mario and Sonic, the minute you moved the frame right, you could no longer go left. This was known as ratchet scrolling. So if you missed that mushroom or coin, and you had to backtrack, you could not. By moving from a point A to point B completion system to more of a collect-a-thon completion system has given rise to the achievement systems that we see in game consoles today that help us gauge how we're doing in a game. Games today also have a much more sophisticated control system along with more sophisticated weapons at your disposal. It's just not A and B. Imagine playing a first-person shooter with one weapon and only two buttons. The biggest advancement in making games easier today is one word. Autosave. Games today implement autosave almost every couple of seconds or every loading screen you go through. I remember in the day when you actually had to go buy a memory card just to get your game to save anything at all. Companies like Rare, when they went in and redid all their games for Rare Replay, had to build in autosave systems into some of these games that never had them when they were originally put out. Creating hard to play games is a sort of dying art nowadays, and it's nice to see from software is keeping that tradition alive in some way. I'm not saying that game journalists have to be esports champions to play these games, but they should have a basic knowledge of how the controllers work and have a basic skill set to actually manipulate the game. A prime example of reporters learning a skill set for their journalism job is a program called RISC. RISC stands for Reporters Instructed in Saving Colleagues, which is a program for combat journalists to learn basic combat skills that protect them and the others around them. Media companies need to make sure that their game reviewers have the proper skill set along with the proper state of mind, aka they want to review these games because they prefer and enjoy them. They should never force somebody to review a product that has no business doing the review. Again, I could go on all day, but neither one of us has time for that. So please leave a comment down below on what you think. Are games getting harder or are games getting easier? I just feel software developers should never ever be forced by the media to basically put things into their games that they had no desire to in the first place. They should want to cater to their fans, not the media. So please, if you enjoyed this video and you like this content, show me some love, like and subscribe down below to receive more content just like this, and thanks for watching. This is Centurion1307, and I'm out of here.